thousands of messages course through social networks every moment, representing a potential goldmine of useful information about rapidly changing events. But finding the most relevant messages in a sea of updates, many of which are out of date almost as soon as they are written, is a tough task. Google's Amit Singhal, one of this year's TR10 innovators, is leading the search giant's efforts to master real-time search. We asked him why real-time search is so important and how Google is sorting the wheat from the chaff. In early days of Google, we would index the web every month. And uh, information would get to our users on an average 15 to 20 days from being produced. As time passed, news organizations came online, people started blogging. We upgraded our crawling technology to crawl every day, uh, every few hours. But in the modern world, information is being generated around the world, around the clock, as news articles, blogs, various status updates like Twitter or microblog services, MySpace, and so on and so forth. And in today's world, what's needed is a system that can get information to our users seconds after the information was produced. And Google real-time search is all about getting information to users within seconds of information being produced. So Google real-time search, uh, let me just show it to you in action. If you type Nexus phone today, which indeed is in the news, what you observe here are all the real-time results coming into Google's results page as we are crawling them. Uh, and uh, clearly there's the news piece of our news universal uh, of our result page but alongside that as people are creating content you are seeing it pour into Google's results page uh, and if you if you so someone just tweeted about a certain link about the phone someone else just tweeted about what the price is and so on and so forth so as this content is being created and you notice that this content was created seconds ago we are getting it bringing it to our users modified with you know uh, passing through our relevance filters technically uh, we have had to build all, several new technologies to make this possible. You can imagine early technologies that we built were crawl based, where you would go out there, find a URL, crawl a page, index the page, and return it to our users. And inherently, that technology is slower. With blogs coming online, we built feed based technologies where people can send us feeds of blogs and we'll index them and send it to. Uh, and make it available to our users. And the feed-based technology was indeed uh, uh, faster. And for building real-time search, we have had to take our feed-based technology to a new level where we can take millions and millions of incoming status updates, micro blogs, news, blogs, various other things, and filter it for relevance uh, within seconds and then bringing it to Google's results page. Now that integration part is also incredibly hard uh, because there's good established information out there and then there's this new information out there and our universal search technology comes in handy to judge when and where should this real-time content, the latest content, be placed on Google's results page. The other thing that we had to develop was uh, how good is this author? So when you have short form content, you want to make sure that the author gets proper credit. Now, if you had a Twitter account, because you are an established uh, person with a big following out there, your tweet should be considered more important because whatever you say carries weight. Some of the well-known bloggers, when they say something, it should carry weight. Well-known journalists, senators as they tweet should carry more weight uh, and indeed what we had to do was to borrow a page from our page rank work to bring it to this new world where people are generating short form content every few seconds to say 
does this person have a lot of followers? You can imagine if I start following Ashton Kutcher, I'm in some sense recommending him or giving him a link in the page rank metaphor. And now you can borrow a page from the page rank technology which has been uh, so successful in making our results relevant. And we brought it to the world of modern short form content generation to assign uh, quality to various authors. Another very important thing that we had to model was how is this topic fluctuating within our real time stream. You look at the stream of keywords coming in and stream of phrases coming in and you observe the coherence in that stream and the fluctuation in that stream. Take something like President Obama. People talk about President Obama all the time and you don't see that those many fluctuations for the query for, for the topic President Obama even though there is lots of talk about President Obama all the time. On the other hand, take something like Nexus 1. Right now, that topic is fluctuating. So we had to model the fluctuations in information generation for a certain topic. And the challenge there is, even though President Obama is uh, always in the news, if he gives a major speech about intelligence failure, like he did yesterday, uh, then how do you notice that something has changed in the information generation scheme? So what we, what we had to do was we had to build a topic model and the rate at which that information is fluctuating. So we had to model that to say, okay, now this topic is fluctuating. It's time to bring it to Google's result page in, in real time. The lessons that we have learned uh, integrating uh, Twitter and FriendFeed and Jaiku and Identica are now porting over, for example, to this new source MySpace that we are integrating as we speak.